Here's my laser collection, laser torches. The very first one here, ooh, 1990 cost me 50 pounds. And this probably costs under a pound, you know, 30 years later. So let me just show you what they, I need to show them on the surface here to show how weak they are. The very first one, for instance, well, you can see that it's, it's a spot, but it's quite weak. And that cost me 50 pounds about 1990. And it's got three big batteries. Now you leap forward 30 years and you've got something like this, which is incredibly bright. It costs a fraction of that amount of money. Extraordinary. And also you can have the fun of putting it through something like this stuff here, which splits up into little dots and things, which is quite fun. I'll show that in a minute with a, a more exotic version. And when you double it up like that, you can have more dots. And when you change the angle like that, you can make the pieces go in and out. Extraordinary. I can show a much better version, which has been handmade. So a lot of fun there. And then there's torches like this, which is actually got, you've got two, two, two buttons. This one is the, a very strong laser. Well, this one here is actually um, a, an ultraviolet light for looking at banknotes to see if they're genuine and so on. So, and all from the same little button batteries. So that's how the, how the, the red laser has been developed. And they were the first ones to come out in about 1990. It wasn't until 15 years later, oh no, 25 years later, 20, 19, uh, 2015, I thought of um, trying other colors. There's green and blue or blue or violet. And this was the first one I caught. I avoided doing that because a laser is just a laser with whatever the color is. Well, no, you can do things with it. And this one shows something quite remarkable. It's a green laser, so I'll show back on the bench again. But look at the effect. By putting these little things in the inside here, I can then turn it around and make it do fantastic things. All done with the green lasers, but could be done with the resin laser too. So that's exactly the same as I've been playing with this, but in a much better version because it moves so much better. Wonderful. What's nice about these particularly is the laser doesn't diminish the further away you are from it, it still stays the same size. So I can remember at least three occasions in summer parties at friends' houses in the late evening, pointing this at the wall of his whitewashed house, and you could see everything absolutely sharp, exactly as I'm showing here. But this is all just about six inches away. That was about 30 yards away, and still it was absolutely sharp because it's a laser. The last one is a blue one, which on first um glance is a very disappointing one. Let me just remind you how bright these ones are. That's a red laser, very strong. The green laser, when it's not misbehaving with its funny stuff, is pretty strong. This one is, well, it's a bit, bit, bit dull. It was a bit dull when I first tried it. It's got a bit better. There we are. The interesting thing about the blue laser is be, it's got a lot more energy to it, a huge amount of energy, and the effect is quite dramatic. So if instead of um, doing it on white paper, I'll do it actually here with the camera. I do it with this, Let's see what happens. This is a red laser, very strong light. You can just about see it, moves around like that, but it doesn't do anything to it. You know, unlike the little torch that I've got here, which actually marks it and makes the, brings up the luminosity, there's nothing happening. And likewise, when I do the green laser, it's not leaving any trace. The blue laser, which is a big beak, does something much more remarkable, and this is what really gets exciting, because when I do this on it, you can draw on it. And <clears throat> as that's done on a big screen from about 50 yards away, it's absolutely extraordinary, because it works for a long distance away. They started producing these now for people to wear at parties. You wear a shirt which is impregnated with luminous paint or something, and when you point this particular type of laser, the blue laser, the blue violet laser into, into it, you can start drawing and w words in it, hi and hello, etc, etc, etc. So a lot more fun can be obtained from what starts off to be a rather dull colour, a little bit of blue light, because it affects, it's, it's got much higher energy, and it's the only one of the lasers which does actually make luminous thing appear. However far away I am, it's still going to make lights appear, which is wonderful. So that's how it all began, with me anyway, um, with a very, very heavy and very expensive item, costing £50. And the red ones are coming right down to, I've got a little cigarette one, which costs under a pound, but that's of the sizes. But these other ones, which are rather more expensive, the blue and the green, I think have, that's particularly the blue, has got a lot to going for it because it, um, it acts on luminous materials such as this or t-shirts impregnated and so on. So there's a lot more fun, I think, from the, from the blue one. But I just love, you know, 
lasers and there was quite a number of games i think there's probably enough for me to show another video on things you can do with these lasers particularly the red one of course which is which is the easiest one to do but there are some extraordinary effects from from playing with them yes they are fun a little bit dangerous if you're a small child so you don't let small children play with them but adults and teenagers who are sensible it's a wonderful toy